morning everybody Brandon with Burns Lawn Care thanks again for tuning in for another video I'm on my way to the pot store now to grab some brake pads for Renee Suburban here um, it's got 89,000 original miles on it and it's finally due for brake pads um, as soon as you hit the brakes you hear a squeaking noise it's the wear sensor on the brake pads so I'm gonna tear it apart today and and do um, the front and rear pads and get this thing up in working order we're also going to replace the air filter on this thing uh, and the cabin filter just because it's due Renee was driving the car the other day and uh, when she came home she had mentioned to me the car was making noise every time she hit the brakes. I said okay. So I went and took her for a ride and luckily the pedal is not pulsating when you hit the brakes which would indicate warped rotors and things like that. Um, it's just making a little bit of a squeaking noise when you hit the brakes. All right, we're on our way back home to get these brake pads installed. I also ended up picking up a cabin air filter and a engine air filter, uh, just because we haven't replaced those in a while. I ended up going with the best pads that they had. Um, they were the CarQuest Platinum ceramic pads. So we'll see how those work out. They should work out good. Um, I like to use ceramic pads on all my vehicles just I think that you get better performance out of the braking with it and a lot less brake dust all right let's take this thing off I do want to get a jack stand under this frame before we go any further. All right, got the jack stand in place just in case this thing decides to come down. Now what I need to do is, I need to remove the caliper itself um, by these bolts right here, one, one there and one down there, so I can uh, get the old pads out. I'm going to check these slides too, make sure they're working right once I get these bolts off. Alright, got this off. Now it's important not to disconnect the brake hose because if you do, you're going to have to re-bleed the brakes. And I'm not looking to do that. Let's see what we got going on here. This one's not bad. Let's see what the other one looks like. This one here is junk. This was the noise we were hearing, guys. Let me check the back side of this rotor. Uh, it's a little squat up, but it's not bad. I think we got to it just in time. All right, so I whipped out my receipt here just to see which pads were the front and which ones were the rear. And uh, these ones here are the front. Now, you can tell the difference. Here's a new pad on my left hand, and in my right hand's the old pad. So there's nothing left to them. Real quick, I want to show you how I compressed the, uh, the caliper here to get the new pads in. I used the existing brake pad. I used the old brake pad. Put it on a clamp, tighten it up, like this and it'll squeeze both those pistons in at the same time a little trick for you in case you guys ever decide to do your own brakes easy way to compress the the um 
the pistons on the caliper and this won't allow you to go too far either all right now as you can see these two brake pads they have the the same number on them right but they're actually different this this thin one here goes up front like this like that and this wider one here is the back side put the caliber back on all right those slides are, are working good I'm able to move them in and out with my hand with my fingers so that's a good sign there what I'll do is I'll zip these in snug and then I'll get the uh, the torque wrench and put it on them and torque them in once I uh, get the wheel on the ground, I have to look up the torque specs. I think normally they're around 95 pounds or so, but I'll look up the torque specs to make sure we're in the right ballpark. All right, I'm just gonna repeat the same process here on the other side. Okay. I'm put this little cap back on that fell off. Okay. Slide bolts working good. That one's half worn. This one's worn out pretty much completely. Look at that, nothing left to it. <laughs> oh, Old one, new one. Wow. I'm not replacing these clips, guys, because there's nothing wrong with them. If they were broken, well, it'd be a different story, but there's nothing wrong with them, so don't fix what ain't broke. All right, I got those bolts tightened up. Everything's good in here. I'm gonna put this wheel back on, and I'll turn the car around and back it in because my air hose isn't long enough to reach the back. Before I just go starting the car up and taking off, I'm just pumping the brake paddle, making sure I got brakes. And I do. Because don't forget, we had those pistons all the way compressed. All right, good pedal. All right, just going for a quick ride around the neighborhood here. Just checking the uh, the brakes out, ensuring that we're good before I give it the seal of approval. I'd much rather it be me that crashes the car if something was wrong than my wife. But so far, so good. All right, so I drove the car all around the neighborhood. Everything seems to be working fine. I'm just gonna take it up on the highway now and get it up to speed and see if there's anything funky going on. I don't think there will be but you never know. I would just want to put it through its paces so we're safe. 
All right, guys, I just got home. Everything's good with the car and the brakes. I'm gonna put this new air filter that we bought in. I haven't changed this in forever. I can only imagine what it looks like. Wow, that's crazy. This filter looks like it's brand new. I'm not even gonna replace it, there's no point. That's, that's nuts. Okay, well, I guess I got a spare for later. Well, I'm glad I picked up a cabin air filter. This thing is disgusting. Gross. Kind of a pain to get at too. They jam it way up into there. Pretty big difference, huh? All right, that's done. All right, now that we're done with the Suburban, uh, a lot of you guys have asked, how is the addition coming along in the house? And we're in the final stages right now. Um, we just got the spray in foam insulation the other day and they're gonna start putting a drywall in. Uh, we got the whole front of the house resided here. Starting to look good. Things starting to take shape. Got a nice new door. And uh, we painted it black. And if you see the other entryway here, that door is white. We're gonna be matching that to that. So things are starting to take shape. Um, a lot of work. Be glad when it's over. So we can get back to fixing the yard and making the yard look nice. We are gonna try to put irrigation in here. Um, you know, just it's not in the budget right now, but the plan is to irrigate the entire property. And we're on an acre and a quarter, so probably not gonna be cheap. So we're gonna have to save up for that, but just happy that this is coming along and we got rid of the ugly yellow. I couldn't stand looking at it anymore. And uh, yeah. We're going to be ripping out all this landscape in here and planting new things. So if you guys have any suggestions that you think would look good, please drop it in the comments below. I'd be really anxious to hear what you guys have for suggestions. Um, I've never been good with plantings and stuff like that, so I could use some help on that. So if you guys could help us out, that would be fantastic. All right, so I've been working on getting this garage clean. And guys, it's an absolute mess. Uh, it was an absolute mess, I should say. I I took everything out of here. I pressure washed the entire floor. And uh, just so I could get my workspace back, I couldn't take it any longer. Um, we are going to be going with a different color floor on the, on the garage floor eventually. With this cream color, it just gets dirty too quickly, and I can't stand it. I like having a, you know, a nice clean floor and it's not going to happen when you have a tan colored floor. It's just, it's just too light. But anyways, here's what we've been working on. I haven't fired this up in a long time and I actually stole the instrument panel from this mower and put it on the Pink Panther while I was waiting for this one to come in. When I ordered this, it, this was on back order for around three months. So, this particular panel happens to be a little different than um, the previous panel that was in there. And although it, it, everything works as it should, you turn, you turn the key over and now it's not getting spark. So now there's a wiring issue to fix on this. No big deal. I, I will fix it. But, I, you know, it's just one thing after another, it seems like. This mower here... This is a right stander. This is not my mower, um, my personal mower. This mower I actually bought off of my friend Tom Cottom. You guys have seen, um, you guys have seen him in the chats when you guys see us on the live. He owns Cottom's Landscaping here out of Easton, Mass. Uh, good friend of ours. What happened with this is this machine blew up. The engine uh, blew up, and. Um, he wanted to get rid of it and move on from it. So, you know, the price was so cheap, I couldn't refuse. And I said, you know what? It'd probably be good content for the channel to rebuild this engine and see if we can get this mower going again. And the funny part is, is about a little over a year ago, I sold him this mower. I used to, this was my mower. 
Um, this was one of the first Stander X's that I bought prior to buying my new one. And, um, you know, I ended up selling it because we didn't need it anymore. We got the new one. And this machine only has, I think, just over a thousand hours on it. A thousand and sixty-seven hours, which is basically nothing. Um, well, I don't know what happened with the engine, but I, I, it seized up, he said. I think it ran out of oil somehow. Maybe it started to burn oil or something or had a small oil leak. I'm not sure. But we'll know when we dive into it. It needs an ignition switch and needs a PTO switch. He ended up taking that out for his other mower. And uh, basically this sat around so long it started to become a parts machine. So we're, you're, you're going to see us on camera. Um, hopefully bringing new life back to this thing. I don't want to have to buy a new engine for it. I'm kind of hoping that this is rebuildable, but I won't know until we get into it. So we'll see what happens there. Here's the Walker MT that we just put the engine in, the 26 horsepower engine that we converted the carburetor. Um, I moved it on this side of the garage, on the right side of the garage, just so we could clean. But I'm, I'm just about ready to, to fire it up for the most part. The fuel pump came in. I, I just haven't wired it in yet. Um, but yeah, this, this thing's almost ready to, to test fire. And you guys are going to see on the upcoming videos... I'm gonna take the deck off this machine here and pull everything apart and uh, sandblast it, paint it up, make it look nice. It'll look like a like a brand new machine when it's done. All right, so this MTSD was always missing a deck. Um, I, I bought it from Randy from Countryside that way. I bought just the just the tractor itself. Um, so I actually have underneath this pile of stuff here that I gotta go through my Walker mulch deck, my 48 inch DM48 mulch deck that we're gonna stick on here. And the only thing I was missing for that was a carrier frame. Well, I happened to find a free Walker mower deck on Facebook Marketplace and the mower deck itself was completely shot. Um, but it had a good carrier frame and it had a good set of gear boxes. Now, on the mulch deck, the gearboxes are pretty much the same as the GHS deck, but this box right here, you need to, you need, you need to change out because it, it goes a different direction. Um, on the GHS blades, the the rotation of the gearboxes, they're, they're counter-rotating. They rotate into each other. Um, but on the mulch deck, both blades spin the same way. But I have, this, I have the gearbox I need to make this work. So that's going to be awesome, but I will film this on a separate video. A lot of you guys have asked me how I go about rebuilding gearboxes and stuff like that and timing them. Well, that video is going to answer all your questions, so stick around for, for an upcoming video on that. Uh, we're going to completely take this apart, um, go through the entire thing, check everything out in there. If it needs new seals, we're going to replace those. And uh, I'll show you a little trick I use for sealing these up so they don't leak. But I won't give I won't give you away all the secrets. But you'll have to you'll have to tune into the video. So this this carrier frame here is in pretty good shape. It's not in great shape, but you know it's in good shape. Um, you know it's old. As you can see, someone welded one of the uh, the deck washers to it because obviously this this broke at one point. That's kind of a bummer. Um, maybe I'll cut that out and fix it so it looks like this so you could put the bushing in there But we'll see uh, But this is gonna go off to the sandblaster. I Got a guy that in local that does my sandblasting for me and uh, We'll sandblast this up and get it raw metal and then we'll stick it. We'll stick it here This is my paint slash powder coat oven that I built a lot of you guys have asked me on this um, I'll give you a quick tour of it right now so guys, this is my homemade powder coat oven. Um, th this is how I, I paint and, you know, refinish all of my lawn mowers or walker stuff or whatever you want to call it in here. Um, I got the cheapy Harbor Freight powder coat set up. Works awesome. Um, I've had no problems with it. And, and basically, I, I built this out of galvanized sheet metal and I insulated it. 
Um, I found the idea here on YouTube um, and, you know, just kind of made my own version of it. It's four feet wide by eight feet tall. It's pretty tall. And what I did was I put like a mini chain fall in here that, that uh, completely swivels around. So I can hang I can hang my lawnmower deck from it and do a complete 360 with the piece while I'm painting it. Um, I did have a vacuum set up where I was going to do abrasive blasting in here, but it didn't work out too well. So I uh, we're going to remove that in due time. But this this oven here is powered by a propane bullet heater. You can see where the heat comes in there. And uh, it gets this oven right up to 450 degrees, no problem. So guys, when I'm ready to spray something, I open up these uh, these trap doors I made here. Pretty simple setup. There's a fan on the other side, creates a, a draft, which pulls material in towards this filter. So when I'm spraying, there's barely any overspray. It just traps it all in the filter here, and I don't have overspray going all over the garage. So that, that works out awesome. As you guys can see here, this is just galvanized sheet metal. It's very thin stuff. I think it was 24 gauge. And then I uh, I used a grill thermometer that I, stuck, I drilled a hole in here and stuck it right through. And that tells me how hot I'm getting. Uh, here's the little heater that's powering it right here. And here's my um, propane bottles here that, that feed it. I do have it wired with electricity so I can turn the lights on and off. Uh, one switch does the lights on and off and the other one does the uh, the fan in the back. So a lot of you guys have asked me on 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 this and how I how I go about painting stuff and powder coating stuff. Well here it is guys. If you guys want to see another video on this I'd be glad to give you one. But you will see some of this in action as we're painting this. Um, when we paint this this machine over here so you guys will get a gist of how I go about doing it as you guys can see right here this was blasted a long time ago and it's actually starting to rust now because it's been sitting in the garage this goes to this MTSD over here that's got the Kubota gas engine in it that's another story it's kind of a basket case right now I will end up putting that together but not now but what I'm trying to show you is the, the blast profile you get. It's a really nice blast profile. So when I spray paint or I powder coat, I got awesome adhesion to it. Well, I appreciate you guys being patient with me as I'm trying to find things to film. Um, it's, it's been a real crazy season so far. I thought we were going to have some good snow plowing videos to show you. Unfortunately, there's been no snow here. <laughs> there's been I haven't even been out plowing at all the season yet so it's been crazy um, but we will keep the videos coming your way a lot of you guys have requested repair videos so I'll do my best to film those for you and hopefully you guys learned something but as always thank you for tuning in uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch our channel I really appreciate all the comments the love and support you guys have been giving us and my wife Renee has been really appreciative of you guys coming in on the live chats asking us awesome questions and showing us a lot of love and support so keep it up guys and as always we'll see you on the next video take care